بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, أولاً أحب أشكر Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Abdullah Al-Barraka and the TechBench team for giving me the opportunity. I hope I will be a good beginning for their events and programs. I hope I will not bore you. Uh, as Abdullah mentioned, I worked, well, I was first in CPC, then I worked in Aramco. Uh, after that, I left, actually, back from the cubicles to school again for my master's degree. Uh, I got my master's at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. in Information Systems Technology and Management. Is the voice clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, after coming back from the U.S., I worked at Ernest & Young as an IT consultant uh, in Real. Uh, many people found it surprising that someone from Sharqiyya leaving and wanting actually to leave Sharia to Riyadh. But uh, I just wanted something different. Uh, I knew that the market in Riyadh in general for, for the consulting business, for the business uh, in general uh, disciplines is much bigger. So that's why I was targeting working in Riyadh. After two years, I got an opportunity to work here at uh, KFUPM. It's something that I've always wanted to do. It's something I had in mind that I will eventually be a university, inshallah, professor. Now I'm a lecturer here and I'm working on my PhD applications. From classroom to cubicle and the way back. Uh, is it working? Sorry. Here's the agenda of the lecture. I'll not necessarily go literally by the book by the same organization. First of all, I'll talk about the different environments of the classroom and the office. Then I'll talk about the differences between the challenges in both environments. Uh, having a high GPA, does that mean that you will be good at work? Maybe yes, maybe no, we'll discuss that. Taking education to the work environment, what experiences, what knowledge take to take with you to the work uh, environment, where to work, some techniques or some advice in looking for a job. Back to school again, whether for a graduate degree or for working in academics, we'll discuss that. Classroom versus office environment. This is my graduation gown for KFUPM, and that was my cubicle at Ernest & Young. Uh, you can see it wasn't that neat. It was mostly because I didn't actually have enough space to fit all the paperwork in the drawers. So, blame it on that. Classroom versus office environment. In the classroom, you have the professors, the office hours, classmates, and it is, in KFUPM, a males-only environment. In the office, you have the managers, you have meetings, you have colleagues, and it's, in some situations, it is a mixed environment. Classroom environment. Professors are mostly the main or the highest chain of command you deal with in general. You might deal with the chairman once in the semester or once probably during the whole four or five years you spend at the university. I only went to the chairman's office when I was, sorry. I only went to the chairman's office once during the four years I stayed here, so you might not necessarily deal with that that much. The professor will be dealing, or the lecturer will be dealing with you during the lecture or during the office, hour, the office hours. The interaction in general in the classroom is not necessarily direct one-on-one. -on -one. In the office hour, you call the professor or the lecturer, you go to the, to the office, you ask about something, you get the information you want, and you're gone. The classmates, the environment in general is, is competitive, but it's not that aggressive. It's more of an individual work if you work hard you will get good grades and you will be a top student. You don't, you don't need to 
kill someone or steal someone's place in order to get an A. Uh, a males-only environment. So many people might fa find that a disadvantage. Uh, they say, why? why? Why don't you even bring females at least and have the classes separated? Well, it's not necessarily that bad. Being in a homogeneous environment can make you behave just the way you are. There is less filtration of the work you do, less filtration of what you say or what you do, the way you behave. It's all males. You can do whatever thing you want, basically. You can just whatever way you want. Maybe sometimes we do need some females in order for some people to know how to dress up a bit, but it's okay. Uh, also, less self-consciousness. You're not always worried what I'm going to say. Did I say something wrong? Did I say something bad? Did I do something bad? It's just, if you do it, you just go with the flow. No one would care. Office environment. Managers. You deal with your managers almost on a daily basis. They check on the tasks they assign to you. They have meetings with you. The managers have general managers. They have directors. There's a partner if it's a firm. There's a CEO if it's a big company. The number of meetings with the higher chain of command depends on the size of the organization. For example, at Ernst & Young, IT consulting, the office was 30 people. So I ran into the partner every day. I would see him. Not necessarily meet with him, but you run into him, you talk to him, he knows everybody in the office. Uh, the management, as I said, you meet them, they assign something to you, you have to do something that way, then you will have a problem. The person above your manager, the director or the general manager, will ask you to do the same thing in a different way. What to do in that situation? That's a challenge. I'll discuss that later. Uh, how to please everyone, or how to try to please everyone, and not put the blame on yourself. Uh, meetings, they can be either important, urgent, or just ad hoc, something routine, something not that important. Important meetings when you are working on a project, the whole team sits together, they assign the tasks, they do the time planning, they do the work breakdown structure, you know what's for you and what's for the others to do. Uh, urgent meetings, you're about to leave the office at 5.30, your manager comes and calls you, oh Yusuf, let's have a meeting, there's something urgent that came up. Okay, what's wrong? Tomorrow we have a deliverable. We have a presentation to be submitted early in the morning. You have to do it now. You have to stay in the office. I did stay in the office till 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight. You will have that. Uh, routine meetings. You just gather every quarter semi-annually or annually, kind of town hall meetings discussing the issues the employees might have, uh, any plans for the whole firm or organization. Uh, most of the time they are boring, I have to say. Some people might fall asleep. Uh, but sometimes there are some little things you need to pay attention to. Sometimes there are certain things that are that might work for you that you can work that you can actually take against the firm in case you needed that. Uh, mixed gender, working with females. Many people are not used to that, uh, either because of the way they were raised. Uh, because they don't have enough exposure to the world or just because they don't. That's a tricky part of the equation. How to deal with females. 
At the beginning, you need to be absolutely formal. Just stay formal. Don't joke. Don't say anything. Wait until you see their reaction. You see the way they behave. Some females would just find it normal to sit and chat with a guy. And don't read beyond what they say. Let's go with some of us married to me. That doesn't work. That's not the situation. It's just the way they are. That's the work environment. You are a professional. Even if you throw a joke here and there, you still need to maintain some sort of professionalism. Challenges. School, you have the degree plan or the curriculum, homeworks and exams, grades. At work, you have the annual plan, tasks, end of year evaluation, both share the time and the people challenge. School challenges. In general, this, the challenges at school are pretty straightforward. Uh, the degree plan or the curriculum, you get it at the first year, freshman, you know your major. You get the degree plan, you know what courses to take, you make a whole plan for the coming four or five years. Hopefully, not more. Uh, so you work based on that plan. Homeworks and exam, that's how you are, that's how your performance is measured. You do well, you'll get high grades. You don't, you fail. There is comparison to the classmates, if it's averaged. But, everybody, but if everybody does well, it will be eventually standardized. And whomever gets a high grade will get an A. So average is not necessarily that bad. Grades are tangible. It's based on the thing you do. No one can, no professor can just give you an, an F for no reason. Sometimes they do. Sometimes. But in general, no. Some people might get an A while they don't deserve it. That happens also. But as long as they are fair to the other people, you will end up getting in trouble or being in a dilemma. You might end up doing some other people's work. I had an interesting situation with one of my master's classes. The professor assigned the groups. However, she told us, if there is someone you don't want to work with, send me the name of that someone. I'll make sure that you don't work with them. Other than that, don't tell me you want to work with this or that person. Tell me who you don't want to work with. That can help. You could, you could talk to the professor, you could tell him, you don't need to tell him in front of everyone, you could just tell him, I don't want to work with this guy. Sometimes if it's small groups, you might want to work on your own. It might be easier for you. I had that problem with some of my friends here at KFUPM. Kintana uh, Dafur. Everybody wants to be with me in the same group because basically I did all the work. I had no problem actually. But from day one, I told them, okay, you don't want to work? Don't. Just don't interrupt me. Don't tell me do this or do that that way. Don't tell me that you will do something and by the deadline, you end up not doing it. Don't put me in trouble. If you set the guidelines, you might save yourself. Professors and instructors. On the other hand, one of the managers I worked with so many times, and he was also my counselor. The first day at Ernest and Young, the guys came, hi, welcome on board, this and that. Who's your counselor? Flan. Oh, good luck. <laughs> that was their reaction. Everybody, no exception. I was like, oh, that will, that's interesting. He was the most socially awkward person I've ever met in my life, ever. 
I didn't know how to deal with him. He doesn't talk. He doesn't speak. If I'm trying to get something out of him, tell me what you want me to do. Just take this, do it. How? What way? What do you want me to do? I don't care. But after a while, I started looking. That's the, that's the situation. That's a tough situation. You don't know what to do. I started looking at deliverables he worked on before. I started kind of imitating his way of doing things, his style, basically. And he was a person who would pay attention to the smallest, the tiniest detail. If there is an extra space after a full stop, he would notice it. I'm not kidding. He would notice it. So I knew, OK. I'm, working, I'm going to work with this person for God knows how long. Two projects in a row. That's the way to deal with it. Just do things the way that satisfies him. It, it paid very well. I got promoted. I built a very strong relationship with him. He trusted me with everything. He even, like, he stopped even reviewing my work. So many people, like, three people working on the same thing, he would review their work, he would interview mine. I built trust with him. He trusted me. So I got some issues resolved in that aspect. He was still socially awkward, but that's his personality. You'll be dealing with crazy people, and you'll be dealing with nice, normal people. <coughs> also, the knowledge. You don't know everything. No one knows everything. You might end up working in a project that you have absolutely no knowledge about it. None. I'd be out. You need to know who has that expertise or that knowledge at the office. That's why you need to stay in good terms with most people. You go and ask someone, hey, I'm working on this. Can you assist me? Can you send me documents? But again, keep in mind that people can be busy. Don't look at a person who is drowning in paperwork and go and ask him at the moment, hey, send me this. Wait till go, go for lunch with them ask them nicely, wait till you see they have some free time, and ask them. Most of the time, people wouldn't have a problem sharing knowledge. I had one bad experience in that regard in Aramco. The division I worked in, there was one person who almost did everything, did all the work. Everybody else would just, was just sitting in their cubicles, YouTubing and Facebooking. I'm not kidding. When I first went in, I wanted to work. I wanted to get knowledge. I wanted to do things. I started asking that person, hey, when can I sit with you? When are, when are you free? I want to learn how to do this, how to do that. He would say, oh, not today, maybe tomorrow, I'll talk to you. One month went away, nothing. Again, put it in writing. Sent him an email, CC'd the manager. Hey, when are you free? I need to sit to you to learn how to do this. He replied. I sat with him. He didn't necessarily give me everything, but I got something. I knew how to deal with him. Every time I needed something, I would just send an email and CC the manager. Some people might be afraid or scared that you would steal their places. Be aware of those people. And you need to know how to deal with them. You have a high GPA. Mabruk. 
it will not, I'm not saying, I'm not demotivating people from doing good job at, in school, not at all. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the only indicator that you will be good at work. What you studied in the books is designed mostly for the ideal world. It's either black or white. In the real world, it's gray in many situations. Let's see. Yeah. You will not necessarily do what you studied. OK, let's see. How many CIM students here? CCSA? Engineering? OK, it's a mix. Uh, OK, let's see what kind of engineers do we have. Chemical? Petroleum? Electrical? Mechanical? Something else I missed? The major piece? Well, COE under CCSE. <laughs> I want the... Well, it is an industry. <laughs> Chemical engineers, when you work at Aramco, you will turn into petroleum engineers. You will, most of the time. I have so many friends who were transformed into physical engineers. I have friends who were computer scientists and they transformed into petroleum engineers. They got their masters up, no kidding, seriously. They got their masters in petroleum engineering. You will not necessarily work in an area that you studied. Even if you do, you will not apply everything you studied in the, in the books. Organizations and companies they do things their own way. Ernest & Young has its own methodology. It has a huge database of how to do every single little kind of project. Any kind of project you would imagine, whether it's done in Saudi, in the US, in Europe, in India, wherever you want, they have a huge database, a huge knowledge base. They put everything, they just dump everything. And there are the general guidelines to do things. If you are applying or if you are submitting a proposal to a client, it has to comply with the EY standards. Auditors come and check it. Have you done it the EY methodology? Have you done it the EY way? Another thing, as I said, being good with the books doesn't necessarily mean you will be good at work. You might live in idealistic kind of world. You will say, no, this thing is done wrong. You have to do it this way. Not necessarily. As long as it's ethical and legal, you're good to go. Another thing, if you are an A-plus student, don't look down at people who have a two or even below GPA. I know people in person, they got, G they graduated with a GPA of two, something around that. They ended up being very, very, very successful in the job market. Very, you have no idea. And I know other people graduated with almost a GPA of 4.0. 3.98, 3.97. They have routine jobs. They work in their locked cubicles in front of a computer. They don't do anything innovative. They are kind of dying in their cubicles. So don't, don't underestimate people. Don't think because someone got a low GPA that means they are stupid, or they will perform badly in the job market. The other way around, taking education to work. The university, 
provided you the mindset to be in the work environment. Whether you like it or not, the way you think changed, will have changed by the time you graduate from the first day you joined the university. You will realize it once you graduate, inshallah. It, education just changes the way or it changes the, your perception of the world. You will look at things differently. Even if you don't necessarily know or have the knowledge about something or about a task you have, you might be able to tackle it, Google it, look at different articles, resources, talk to people. You will find a way to do it. CIM, MIS, MIS graduates basically work in everything that is related to business. They work in finance, they work in marketing, they work in IT, business analysts, uh, even sometimes technical, they go like database managers and such. You don't necessarily need, you don't necessarily have to work in what, in the area you studied. However, if you see an opportunity at your workplace, for example, a consultant, there is a project in one area, I know this area, I studied it. It's a straightforward applying what you studied in the real world. Let people know. You might not be assigned to it. Talk to people. Hey, I have the knowledge about this and that, and convince them. Tell them that you know this, this, and that about that area. If they don't assign you for, to that project, they will at least know that there is someone to go back to. Because as I said, you might work in projects that you have no knowledge about, and people might be the same. You might be the person to go to for other people. So keep that in mind. Show your skills. Don't shy away. Where to work? You need to know what you want to do. You are in the IT field. Do you want to stay in the technical side of it? Do you want to work in sales? Do you want to work in consulting? Do you want to be a business analyst, a systems analyst? Know what you want to do. It's not just I want to work in IT and that's it. No geography. What does that mean? Any idea? Yes. Yes. Know what jobs are where. Know the locations of the different types of jobs. As I said, Sharqiyah, mostly industrial. Riyadh, mostly business. Jeddah, mostly marketing. More or less. Of course, you will have other opportunities in other areas, but in general, that's it. Don't say, well, that's a personal opinion. Oh, I'm from Shaghi, I don't want to leave. I know people in person. I know some, some of my relatives do say that, and I make fun of them. Keep your options open. Look at the job market before you graduate. At least a year, I would say. How many seniors do we have here? Juniors? People who finished co-op or summer training? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Most of you are in a good position probably, hopefully. Start searching now. See what are the options. No names of firms and companies. Don't limit yourself, again. Get to know people. 
I wouldn't have been here if, I do, if Abdelilah didn't come and talk to me at the gym. I wouldn't have been here. You, d you never know what, where you might find opportunities. You don't need to ask the people you know directly, the people you are friends with, for favors. Most of the time, actually, 